hand from his waist down. Well, of course, that kind of embarrassing right today. So, so, so when the heathen king took the two messengers from David and thought them to be spies rather than emissaries of peace, the first thing he did, he shaved their beard, mm -hmm. cut their hair, and and took their 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 shirts their shorts off and sent them back to David. Read that passage again. Wherefore Hanan took David's servants and shaved them and cut off their garments in the midst hired by their buttocks and sent them away. Uh -huh. Then there went certain and told David how the men were served, and he sent to meet them. He sent to meet them. For the men were greatly ashamed. They were ashamed, uh huh. And the king said, Tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown and then return. You got to tarry in Jericho till your beard grow back and your hair grow back, then you can come back to Jerusalem. Amen. Because David, even though they were heroes in the actual eyesight of the people of Jerusalem, they still couldn't come back to the city because they were inappropriate. Mm -hmm. They were young men who had taken the vow and, they had, and the heathens had cut their hair off and cut their beard off. Amen. Now, true, they cut their breeches off, but David gave them some more breeches, but he couldn't give them another beard and no more hair. So he told them to go to Jericho and wait there until your beard go back and your hair go back. Then you can come back to the city. But you can't come back to the city in the condition you're in. Even though you didn't cause the condition, you sh I'm trying to show you how important they held the vow of a Nazarite. And you know it must have been important because Jesus went to the cross the same way. Hallelujah. And the apostles had the same concept. So you have to be very careful yeah. when you start getting into the traditions of men. Give me Colossians 2 and 8. Amen. I'm showing you the importance of the vow of a Nazarite. Yeah. And I'm also trying to express to you the so-called modern haircut never came to exist until the late 1800s, early 1900s, yeah. where people got their so-called haircut. Yeah. Now, like I said before, I'm not against, if you want to go to the barber shop, fine. But I'm not going. Amen. Yes. I'm called to a higher calling. And I, 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 I expect preachers Amen. to follow after me. Amen. As I follow after Christ. Amen. Amen. So, so we have to understand that when you try to do right by the Bible, somebody always going to criticize you. But I'm not worried about their criticism because as long as I can back up what I teach, as long as I can back up my life with this book, then you go ahead on about your business. Praise Lord. If you want to cut your hair bald, fine. But the bald head is a heathen custom. If you want to be a heathen and call yourself a Christian, do that. But I'm going to call myself a Nazarite because I've taken a vow. Hallelujah. Even though it's not mandatory, but nevertheless, I want to come as high as I can Amen. in the sight of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Now, let me kind of connect this with uh, Revelation first chapter. Find out what all the problem is. Jump right into verse 1. I hope y'all following with me in the scripture now. Amen. So y'all know that, that ain't Bishop Walker, Abraham. That's the word of God. Amen. Right from verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Things that must shortly come to pass, he showed his servant. Uh -huh. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Yes. Who bear record of the word of God. Who bear record of the word of God. Now keep in mind, we're talking about the word of God here. We're not talking about somebody's individual theology. We're talking about what God said, what thus saith the Lord. All right, read. And of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Uh -huh. Blessed is he that readeth. Wait. Blessed is he that readeth. Y'all reading this? Amen. Blessed is he that readeth. Uh -huh. And they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. Wait. Now now you got to hear the word but you also got to keep the word. Y'all right. see that? Amen. You don't just hear it but you got to hear it and then apply it. Amen. You got to hear the instruction and then keep the instruction. Amen. Blessed is he that readeth and, and that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. Glory, hallelujah. Keep those things that are written 
therein. Therein where? Therein in the Bible. Yeah. You got to keep those things. Yeah. Praise God. So we have to again understand fully. Anytime you teach the truth, and especially in this dispensation of time, you're going to always get rebellion. Mm -hmm. Amen. They rebelled against God himself in the flesh. Yes. Don't, don't tell me they didn't. Because when he looked around, he didn't have but 12 disciples left. Yes. After all the preaching and teaching, all the miracles he'd done, he didn't have but 12 disciples left. And when he was hanging on the cross, he didn't even have 12 disciples. Because yes. they went on back to fishing. He had a woman. Yes. Didn't he? And that woman went looking for him. After they took him to the cross. And they said, what you doing? Where you going? Said, I'm looking for Jesus. Yes, I want to know what you've done with him. But then disciples weren't looking for him until he appeared before them. Amen. I'm showing you weakness Amen. in the faith Amen. and steadfastness in the faith. Yes. But thank God for mercy. Yes, and Jesus told Mary Magdalene, go and tell Peter and my disciples I have risen. Yes. I'm not dead any longer. Yes. I have risen. Yes. Yes. And she wasn't told them. But then he, got, he had to appear before them. And they still saw him didn't believe. Thomas said, no, I ain't going to believe unless I see the hole in your side and touch it. Amen. He didn't want to see it. He wanted to touch it. And Jesus said, here, yeah. put your hand in, my, in the hole in my side. Yeah. And Thomas fell down and said, my Lord and my God. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm trying to say he had to appear. But he ain't going to appear this time. Y'all hear me? You got the words already went forward. Now you got to take hold to this. Because God is not going to come down here and stand in front of you and say, look. Here's the hole in my side. Here's the nail prints in my hand. Now, do you believe? No, it, 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 that's too easy. And he ain't going to make it that easy. He sent the revealed word of truth. Amen. Now, we got to take the word of truth and we got to hold on to it. Amen. Revelation, uh, second chapter, verse. Well, let, 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 before I get that, jump in at second Timothy chapter two. I want to make this connection. Amen. The Bible is the engrafted word of God. And we have to read it, hear it clearly, and then begin to apply it in our lives. In uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, jump right into verse 4, jump into verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. My son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. You got to pay attention to the word that is being taught you. Yes. Read. The same commit thou to faithful men. You can't commit this to everybody Amen. because everybody ain't going to pay no attention. You got to commit it to faithful men. Faithful men. Now, faithful men, that's men who are going to believe and follow their leader. Amen. Yes. You have to understand, brothers and sisters, this is not no easy task. Amen. You got to follow this thing. Amen. Every single day of your life, Amen. when they make fun of you, when they reject you, Amen. when they mock you, when relatives turn against you, when relatives say you're in a cult, you're in a false religion, listen, you got to hold steadfast. You, you say, no, I, I can back up what I say with the word. I had a, I was out in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and they had called me, some of y'all heard my testimony, they had called me to speak out against homosexuality. Amen. And they was having a forum at that time, whether to pass this resolution about two men getting married, two lesbians getting married. And uh, uh, I lined up about 11, about 11 preachers. Amen. He was going to come and back me up. <laughs> I looked around, wasn't but one there. Amen. Me and the other, other uh, uh, another minister was there. And uh, you ought to heard the preachers in line saying we have decided to open our doors to homosexuals and lesbians because God loves them just like he loves everybody else. And I was up there standing alone. And man, them people looked at me like I was Adolf Hitler. <laughs> Praise God. You know, hallelujah. But I had to take a stand. And, and, you know, sometimes they would pass more time. Somebody would give up their space because you only, they only let you speak for three minutes. But but I, I could say a whole lot in three minutes. Amen. And uh, uh, I, I thought somebody was going to grant me time. Uh, no, it, would, it wouldn't grant me no time. But only two of us showed up. Amen. And and one of the uh, pastors was a Church of God in Christ pastor that I knew out there. And I, I was sure he was going to come. And he said, well, we're we we going to let God work it out. 
Well, God work it out. God told you to work it out. <laughs> you, you, you got to teach it. He'll fix it, but you got to teach it. Amen. Praise the Lord. God ain't gonna come down here and teach it. You got to. That's why I call preachers. How shall they know what they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? 